Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a search and rescue team in our region reacts to a new bill signed by Governor Andy Bashir aimed at improving disaster response. And political attacks continue between two front runners for the Republican nomination for Kentucky governor. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is now 4.59 on April 27th. Now let's check in with Brandon Robinson for a look at this slightly warmer morning. Mm -hmm. Brandon? Exactly, it's slightly warmer and a few clouds starting to build in out Definitely. there. But it's dry for now. We're going to continue to watch the possibility for some rain chances moving in this afternoon. But for the morning, enjoy it. Let's take a look, see what's going on satellite radar. You see those clouds building in from the south and from the west. Rain is still off to our south. We'll take a little bit of an extended look there, kind of zoom out the radar just a little bit. And we'll see that that rain is down into parts of Tennessee. And then we've got some more coming up from western Tennessee that will eventually cross the border this afternoon. Cameras not looking too bad across the region this morning. We've lost our WI. MT studio camera there for a second and hopefully be back but Buffalo Mountain ja um, ja almost said tried to put Jackson in there Whitesburg I was looking at Whitesburg and Jenkins and almost come out as uh, Jackson there there's WYMT and then you see London Corbin Pikeville Jenkins everybody pretty quiet this morning we're going to see temperatures fairly calm out there 130 degree reading over in Clintwood at 38 everybody else is in the 40s and 50s this morning Urban and Manchester may eventually drop into the 30s as well 50 in Monticello one of the warmest spots there went Grundy it hurt me there you go into the 30s this morning 39 again a lot of mid to upper 40s there out the door forecast clouds are increasing this morning so we're going to call it about 47 to start the day and we'll head up into the low 70s before the rain chances move in later this afternoon and then we'll start to drop off pretty quickly after that olivia all right thank you brandon on tuesday governor andy Bashir signed into law a plan that will create a state organized search and rescue program Kentucky is the last state in the South without a state organized search and rescue team. Crews like the Wolf County search and rescue team have helped fill the need. But Michael Hackett, deputy chief with the Wolf County search and rescue, says the July floods highlighted the need for a statewide team. It has kind of set in like the keystone of, of what we need for uh, the politicians to kind of see, yeah, this is this might be something we need and maybe it can help out the state of Kentucky. And obviously the floods show that it can if it's done right, which I think it will. He says he hopes the program will support their operations and improve future disaster responses. Governor Bashir says the federal government will help hundreds of homeowners impacted by natural disasters in 2021. The governor announced the Federal Department of Housing and Urban Development will allocate $123 million to help rebuild. It will go to hundreds of people devastated by the December 2021 tornadoes, as well as some 2021 flooding victims in eastern Kentucky. It is expected the money could lead to 600 new homes in the affected areas. We are going to spread the wealth to those who need it the most. If you are someone who is impacted, I'd encourage you to reach out to your local nonprofit housing partners or your local housing authority about the disaster recovery program. Applications for the assistance will start on May 1st. Governor Bashir says the process is underway to get help for victims of last summer's flooding in eastern Kentucky. A Kentucky congressman is introducing his first bill, aiming to make sure no child goes hungry. The bill known as the School Mills Expansion Act is looking to amend the National School Lunch Act's community eligibility provision to allow more schools to provide free meals for every student they serve. The bill would also allow federal reimbursement to schools for the mills, allowing under-resourced schools to also participate in the program. The bill was introduced to the House of Representatives by Congressman Morgan McGarvey and referred to the House Committee on Education and the Workforce for consideration. West Virginia Governor Jim Justice is expected to announce he's running for the U.S. Senate. He has scheduled a news conference at the Greenbrier Resort at 5 o'clock this evening, promising a special announcement. And every indication suggests the Republican is going to run for the seat now held by Democratic Gov Senator Joe Manchin. He is yet to announce if he plans on running for re-election. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell is defending two conservative Supreme Court justices who are facing scrutiny. He accuses Democrats of trying to defame Justices Clarence Thomas and Neil Gorsuch. 
Members of the party are asking questions about their failure to report subsidized trips and lucrative real estate transactions. Let me just repeat that I have total confidence in Justice Gorsuch, Justice Thomas, and all seven of their distinguished colleagues, no matter who appointed them, no matter who appointed them. Just yesterday, all nine justices explained in a statement their joint approach to maintaining their high ethical standards. Senate Judiciary Chair Dick Durbin called Tuesday's letter from Chief Justice John Roberts on the subject inadequate. In the letter, Roberts declined to testify before the committee, and Durbin says it appears to defend the status quo when it comes to justices reporting gifts. The attacks continue between the two perceived front runners for the Republican nomination for Kentucky governor. A PAC supporting Attorney General Daniel Cameron has started an anti Kelly Craft website, which labels the former UN amb ambassador Oklahoma Kelly. It refers her ties to Oklahoma, saying she did not vote in Kentucky's 2019 Republican primary and noting she made campaign contributions from a home in Oklahoma. Kraft's campaign has called her a lifelong Kentuckian, and the Herald Leader reports Kraft has been registered to vote in Lexington since 1991. The Kraft camp sent out mailers aimed at Cameron, calling him handpicked by the establishment. It also compares Cameron to Governor Andy Bashir and notes the two worked at the same law firm. And Agriculture Commissioner Ryan Quarles has launched his first television ad, which is largely introductory. He touts his rights to life and NRA endorsements and speaking on camera. Quarles says, quote, if you want a governor who thinks like you because he was raised like you, he would be honored to have your vote. He, was, he has held on to most of the money he raised so he can spend it in the closing two weeks of the race. The primary is May 16th, which early voting being held on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday before that. Thanks for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. Coming up next, an animal shelter in our region stops taking in animals after a potentially deadly virus spreads among the kennels. And while we might be dry this morning, rain chances will arrive by this afternoon. I'll track them out for you in about three minutes.